giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West. This past weekend, we wrapped up six weeks of grueling qualification in the West. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at this weekend's event, check out the Week 6 Top 10, and talk about what's to come for teams in the West as we move towards next week's championship. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Croucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. All right. Uh, before we really get into the thick of things, Tyler, you want to tell us about our giveaway tonight? Yep, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, giveaway tonight. Once again, our friends from Redfish Robotics. This is the six one tonight, guys. So if you've been watching all night and you haven't won, I don't know what you're doing. So uh, with that said, our friends at Redfish Robotics at tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics are giving away this cool, fun, branded mug. Uh, you can check out other mugs in that URL as well. Uh, and the keyword for tonight is going to be, it's B-O-T-W, B-O-T-W for uh, brutal, obvious, uh, uh, the, the words I'm thinking of not appropriate. The so BOTW is the best of the West. Be, oh, yes. Go. Best of the West. Congratulations to that. Uh, make sure you type that in to have an opportunity to win. Click the follow button. And if you like five times luck, make sure you subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy the show. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, the first of just three regionals in the West this week was the Canadian Rockies Regional in Calgary, Alberta. 37 teams competed to see who would come out on top of the northernmost regional of the year. After 10 rounds of qualifications, two teams came out atop the rest with a 2.80 ranking score, with 359 the Hawaiian kids taking the top spot after winning out on the cargo tiebreaker. With their first pick, they added 21-22 Team Taters to their alliance and picked up 68-41 Cerberus 2.0 as their third the number one alliance marched through quarters and semis, maintaining winning margins of over 30 points in each match. They met up against the second alliance of 64-85, 50-15, and 72-46, who was also able to work through their quarters and semis in just four matches. The number two alliance hit a couple snags in the finals, and in finals one, the number one alliance didn't look back. The kids, Taters, and Cerberus went back-to-back, 71-60 and 89-76 to take home the banners. They weren't the only ones walking away with a spring in their step. Despite taking the L in finals, all three teams on the number two alliance grabbed wildcard bids to champs. Congratulations to all six finalist teams, as well as to rookie all-stars, 78-43, the Galactic Wranglers, EI winners, 72-77, Mandela United Squadron, and to the Regional Chairman's Award winners, 41-91, IMC. Aiden, what did y'all have going on in sunny California? Well, California saw the best Aerospace Valley Regional yet this weekend, never mind the fact that it's only our second. With lots of top contenders in the mix, quals were little more than a waiting game for the big show sure to come. For the first time this season, it was Team 1678 Citrus Circuits taking the top of the leaderboard, holding an impressive ranking average of 3.75, their highest all season. Rather than picking up any of the other captains, however, Citrus made the bold play to pick up rank 13, 3476 Code Orange, who only had a ranking of 1.91 and snatched up 2637 Phantom Cats at the end of the draft. Rank number two team, 2659, the Robo Warriors, coming off of a recent win at LA North, opted to form the Maroon Alliance with Idaho winners 5012 Griffin Gear and then picked up 6072 Triton Tech. Captaining the third alliance, 2073 Eagle Force was determined to run things back after a bitter defeat at Monterey Bay in the finals. And by some divine intervention, 1538 Holy Cows were still available to them. But their real ace in the hole lay with 6957 The Aces from Henderson, Nevada. Through the quarter, though the quarterfinals saw a little hubbub, save for a 4v5 upset that went to three matches, the semifinals became some of the most nail-biting matches of the event. 
In the first versus fifth matchup, the Red Alliance ran to a bunch of issues that were only made worse by the presence of 51-24 playing defense, and malfunctions from 50-12 brought down the second alliance's scoring potential against the third. Both of these sets went to three matches as the higher-ranked alliances both mustered the ability to run things back in their favor. The finals saw the Zesty Cats against Griffin Warrior Tech in a near-mirror match of scoring potential. Finals 1 went in favor of Red 85-81, to one of the closest finals matches we've seen this season, but the Blue Alliance was overwhelmed in the second match with scores of 97-62. to Grads to Citrus on their third banner of the season, 34-76 on their third regional win ever, and 23-67 on winning the event alongside them. Only 6072, Triton Tech had not qualified on the finalist alliance, earning them the wild card after both 2659 and 5012 recent wins. Props are also in order to 6707, Pass the Wrench, who won the Rookie All Star Award, 5857, Walnut Valley Robotics on taking EI, and despite a quarterfinals exit, Team 589 Falcon Robotics took the Regional Chairman's Award. With this event over, California's events conclude until the offseason. So just a quick question for you, Aiden, or anybody else. Uh, so I was looking at the Blue Lions chat. I was I was at the Seven Rivers Regional by the, the chat up watching. A lot of people seem very surprised uh, that Citrus did not pick 5012. Uh, why do you think they went with Code Orange? What stuck out to you? So Code Orange was not a terrible robot by any means, right? I think the ranking score just wasn't ra- – ranking's weird this year, right? I think we've all kind of noticed that at this point. Um, Code Orange was performing, but probably not to the level that they would have liked to be performing, much less everyone else who was watching. Um, so I think they kind of squeaked by because uh, Citrus knew that they could come alive when it mattered. Um, personally, I'm surprised that they didn't pick 5012. My my money was on 5012, actually, because, um, you know, that's a successful combination that we've seen in the past. We know that works. I look at matches that they played together um, going back years and years and the 34 76 1678 well that's not necessarily an iconic duo um despite the similarities and citrusness so <laughs> we'll see right uh it's their fourth banner this season uh for citrus actually so they've they've been performing really well i'm more excited that they finally took rank one because they've been getting overshadowed by 1323 a bit citrus and 5012 were uh world champions in 2015 right Right, but 5012 actually didn't play too many of those matches uh, at all, and they really mm. improved since. They've been um, quite a threat ever since, but 2015 was not their peak season, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, I think, had to be a close choice there between 5012, Citrus, and uh, there was at least one other team, I think, that was in the hunt there. 2073 uh, would have been a good pick, I think, as well. Yeah. Because they were yeah. balling at Monterey. Yeah, for sure. Um, but... You know, you can only pick one, right? That's yeah. And could have been anything. Could have been, you know, reliability concerns with one of the other robots. Who who knows what goes into it at that point, right? Uh, so with that, we've reached the last regional we'll recap this year. The Arizona West Regional in Phoenix was a relatively small event with about forty-two teams competing. Um, It had just four completed rockets, and with that, the rankings came down largely to teams ability to climb and win matches. In the end, it was 2478 winners of the Arizona North Regional, Westwood Robotics, who came out atop the rankings with a 2.91 ranking score. They picked up 2403 Plasma Robotics with their first pick and scooped 2662 to round out the alliance. They worked through their quarters and semis in quick fashion, keeping their opponents under 70 70 points in each of the four matches. But after upsetting the three seed in quarters and then the two seed in semis, both of which went to three matches, it was the number six alliance captained by 6479 Aztec with 498 the Cobra Commanders and 6833 Python Robotics would meet the number one seeds in the finals. The first finals match was close with the number one seed able to narrowly outpace the six seed by nine points after being stifled by the great defense of 498, the six alliance's first pick. The second match started much the same way, but the number one alliance elected to bring 2662 back onto their half of the field to play counter D against 498. With 6479 and 6833 freed up, they kept the scoring close enough that a missed level three climb by 2403 sent them set to a tiebreaker. In the third match, the number one alliance sent 2662 back over to play defense. 
and chose to take on the absolutely oppressive defense of 498 without any without any protection. With the game piece scoring of both alliances within one point at the end of the match, each uh, the final match came down to the climbs. 6479 executed the classic grip and flip for the number six alliance, while 2478 came up just short of a successful level three for the number one alliance. When all was said and done, the number six alliance was able to take the final match 69 to 61. Congratulations to them and to rookie all star winner 7620 Anthem Bots. AZ West also had two Kling Blingers. After winners 498, the Cobra Commanders won Engineering Inspiration to finish the Gold Silver Kling Bling. And finalist 2403 Plasma Robotics was able to take home the Regional Chairman's Award, finishing off the Silver Gold Kling Bling. So that's all the regionals we had for the week, but we had one hell of an event go down this weekend as well. Bryce, what do you got? Yeah, up here in the Great Northwest, 64 of the top performing teams this year descended on the for the first time at the Tacoma Washington Convention Center in what would be another fantastic district championship event. Although this venue had some significant problems in its inaugural year, including a cramped and sketchy set of bleachers, nothing could stop these teams from staging some of the best qualification rounds Destination Deep Space has seen yet. With an average qual score of 71.7 points, which is actually higher than the average playoff score this week, and a slim winning margin of 15.6, these qual rounds definitely played more like championship quarterfinal rounds, if you ask me. Early in the competition, 49-11, the Cyber Knights hit the round running with a couple of 4RP matches and quickly took the top spot. But about halfway through, 2046 Bare Metal was looking strong to snatch that top seed after completing a pair of rockets as well. In match number 73, though, a dead partner in front of their HAB3 platform caused Bare Metal to take a 0RP match, leaving their road to the top looking much more precarious. Luckily for Bare Metal, they had a match against 4911 later on in the tournament. And when match 103 rolled around, the Bears managed not only to complete a rocket and win the match, but also prevent the Cyber Knights from getting the HAB climb ranking point, a point that ended up being crucial in deciding the top seed team. After this point, the top five teams were relatively separated from the rest of the field, but inside the top five, it was a tight race up until the end. In fact, the nine, nine matches left in quals, there were still three teams that could rank first, Bear Metal, the Cyber Knights, and 2990 Hotwire. But after match 120, when Bear Metal faced off against Hotwire and took home four ranking points, they finally locked up the top spot. The alliance selection started off with probably the only obvious pick of the event, and 2046 selecting the fourth ranked team, 2910 Jack in the Bot. They ended up picking up 2907 Lion Robotics to round out their alliance, and the quarterfinals were relatively uneventful, with only one upset series being the five alliance besting the number four alliances in three incredibly close matches. The semifinals, however, saw a surprise in the 2v3 side of the bracket, with number 3 alliance of 4488 Shockwave, 2930 the Sonic Squirrels, and 5468 Chaos Theory punching their ticket to the finals after the number 2 alliance had a down robot in the first match, called in a backup, who also died in the second match. The first finals match was very close. After the blue alliance took a sizable lead in Sandstorm, Chaos Theory did a great job of slowing down bare metal, and anyone trying to score on that side of the field, really. However, the final score was 91-80, to and Red took the match. The second match was less close, with a score of 91-60, to and the number one alliance took home the victory. Congratulations to them, as well as 568 Nords of the North and 6831 AO5 Annex on engineering inspiration. Big congrats to 7461 Binary Circles on Rookie All-Star, and 3024, my favorite team, 2557 Soda Bots and 4125 Confidential on PNW's Highest Honor, the, re- the District Championship Chairman's Award. All right. That was a crazy event, you know, trying to keep up That's with true. the PNW. And, you know, here in the West, we're not super used to district championships still. So <laughs> um, the point, trying to keep track of like the district points along with the current ranking and all the final standings of everything was pretty crazy all right so 
With that said, all of the events covered here in the West for Week 6, we've got the top 10 teams in the West, as voted in the FRC Top 25 poll. Um, once again, well, I guess for the first time this season, 1678 Citrus Circuits taking home the top spot. 2910 Jack in the Bot from PNW taking home number two. 3476 Code Orange in three. 2046 Bare Metal in four. And the Hawaiian Kids, 359, rounded out the top five. We had 2659, 2990, 4488 in six through nine, eight. No, 5012 rounded out the top nine. Gosh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to pop between two different things. And then we did have a top 10 tie between 2471 Mean Machine and 4911 the Cyber Knights. Is this the first time this has happened for for our show? I think for us. I think this is nice. the first time we've ever had a tie. So that's pretty cool. Part, uh, of, this, part of this might be too, just to mention. So this week we decided to actually have people self identify what regions they're from. And this poll is based off of people from the USA and Canada West regions, right, guys? So this is the yeah, full this is the coverage. Full, oh, this is the full set. one? Yeah, this yeah. isn't even people identifying with the West. Oh, um, yeah. we'll, we'll probably Bryce, release those results Bryce, later, right? Why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about the West specific? Race? Yeah, why don't I just uh, read down it? So, number one, we had 2910 Jack in the Bot, then 2046 Bare Metal, 1678 the Citrus Circuits, 2990 Hot Wire, 4488 Shockwave, 3476 Code Orange, 2930 the Sonic Squirrels, 2898 the Flying Hedgehogs. 1540, the Flaming Chickens, and 2471, Mean Machine. Yeah, so the the true voters from the West voting in the West, uh, clearly PNW got a huge boost there. Um, you know, 2910 and 2046 taking the top two spots. And what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those are yeah. BNW teams. The only two from California are 1678, 3476. Everyone else is at DCMP up in PNW. That's crazy. So yeah. clearly the PNW's got some top 25 fans. There's some fans out there, yeah. Yeah, all Good right. And I, I think people are motivated after they have their district champs to finally show up and vote. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. Uh, so, you know, that's it for qualifying events here in the West. Um, Houston is the next thing on our docket. After six week of six weeks of event, we've seen the good and the the good, the bad, and the ugly come out of Destination Deep Space. After finishing up those qualifying events and heading into champs, have your guys' opinions on the game changed all that much? Kinda. Yeah, I'm re I'm ready for 2020. <laughs> we'll put it that way. That's my opinion now. Uh, a lot of this game has been quite rinse repeat same old song and dance pretty much every event i'm hoping houston's a nice uh refreshing uh take away from that yeah i definitely agree as far as houston goes i think that uh we finally saw some different play especially in the quals at district champs but uh i think it'll be interesting to see the different matchups that are possible at houston some of the Stuff that went down at PNW was a little more predictable than I'd like, and I think Houston is going to give us a break from that. Yeah, uh, you know, I still hate this game. I, you know, <laughs> it's it's not my favorite for sure, but I I do think that Houston can maybe breathe some life into it. Um, you know, you'll have a way deeper field hopefully on each division, and so I think that'll help liven up some of these boring qual matches we see um and hopefully everybody at that point knows how to play the game so, so clint how long have you been around in frc for uh 10 years now so, so in 10 years where does this preliminary rank in your 10 years uh it's way down there i mean lunacy was my first game so that's like at the bottom for sure but then <laughs> this has got to be just a few spots above that i think um i don't like this game i really don't and I, and I, you know, it's not because we built a bad robot, I don't think. I just think the game's bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. I right. think that this game could use more action for sure. I think that the matches are lacking some drama. But I, I think that it may be the GDC's most balanced game that they've made. So it's got some things going for it. But balance doesn't always mean exciting and inspiring. Yeah. I think things are well balanced. Things are well th 
thought through. The problem is there's no flow, there's no momentum, and that kills the entire game. Everything that's done correctly is killed by how slow-paced scoring is. Guys, just remember, if you love the game, it's presented by Boeing. And if you hated the game, it's also been presented by Boeing. So really, <laughs> Boeing's either love or hate either way. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, because this is our last show this year, I wanted to look back to our first show this year where I asked everybody on here to make a bold prediction. Um, you know, Aiden, you, <laughs> you didn't really go all that bold. You said no. the boost. You didn't think the Poos would go undefeated. How do you feel about that now? Well, I feel I felt dumb about five minutes after saying it because everybody was ragging on me for that. Um, you know, I, I stand by it, though. I really didn't think people were going to be able to go undefeated just seeing the nature of the game. Right. It seemed like there was too much coordination and a bit too much luck um, that went into winning matches. And you can't really make that luck for yourself the same way you could with power up or games before. Um but we have had one team go fully undefeated. That's 1323 Madtown Robotics. Um, they're 31, 0, and 0. They're the only truly undefeated team this far into the season. Um, there's also, not from our region, uh, 1114 Simbots from, uh, I don't actually remember where, I think St. Catharines um, in Canada. But they're 35 wins, 0 losses, 1 tie. So they're technically undefeated, but they've still got uh, their district championships and Detroit ahead of them. So I think, you know, my hot take seemed pretty lukewarm, but it held up in the fact that barely anybody was able to go through their regionals unscathed. Uh, I, 254 has only got one loss and one tie, but even they've struggled to get there. Madtown's the only team coming out of this without a scratch, really. Um, I think my hotter take, which is fresh out of the fire, I think Madtown should be the team that wins Houston. I think Madtown wins champs this year. Um, they've got the bot for it. This is playing to all of their strengths. I think if you have 29, 10 on their division, if you got these two swervy boys together, it's over. You're done. It's like watching poofs and wranglers wind up on the same division last year. You know, what, what do you even do? Yeah. So, well, that step hasn't step. happened yet. So the rest yeah. of us are going to cross our fingers. Um, <laughs> Bryce, uh, you know, your prediction was you didn't think we'd see a score over 120. Uh, this past weekend, we did see a penalty-free 125 match at the Test District Championship by the number one alliance there. That was 148-33-10 and 30-35. Uh, do you think we'll see more scores over 120? you think that's it? you think it was a one-and-done thing? Yeah, I, uh, I'm actually really curious to see this match because the— other side of the field also scored well over 100 points. In fact, I believe there was only a two-point difference in the amount of game pieces scored, and the rest of the difference was in climbing. So uh, it makes me very curious if there was any defense played. And, uh, yeah, I will just say that I was so close. <laughs> you, you were the, close. Uh, you were close. Literally right last week we had to see, and here we are. Um, but I I will be surprised. I'll say that I'll be surprised if there's another match over 120 um, in Houston or Detroit or in the other district champs that are still left. Um, just because I think that uh, the game lends itself too much to defense. And that's a big reason why I said what I did is that I – I don't think that's changed. If anything, I think defense has become a more common strategy. So it could happen, you know, maybe uh, 1323 and Jack and the Vought are on the same alliance. Maybe everyone will be screwed by 120 point score every match, but we'll just have to wait and see, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think in this match, there wasn't actually any defense played. Um, you know, I think for most of that, most of their limbs run the number one alliance actually played three offensive robots, um, which probably helped that out quite a bit. Uh, my bold prediction was that before week five, we'd see a 4.0 ranking score out of somebody. 1323, um, they keep coming up. They built such a good robot. They broke all of our um, all of our predictions. But 1323 was close at Sacramento. They came just one cargo short. In, I think it was match 40 there and finished with a 3.88 ranking score, which, uh, you know, was just one ranking point under perfect. 
you know, would have liked to been right at least once in my life. But oh. uh, <laughs> once again, I, I missed out on that one. Uh, uh, I still accept you. Yeah. F's in the chat for Clint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was uh, – yeah, they're a great robot. I, I definitely think that no matter what field they go on, they're gonna you know have a ranking score well over three five. They're they play great against defense, finishing rockets super early in the match. Um, even with you know heavy defense against them, they're able to to finish a to complete a rocket. So um, definitely looking forward to see what they can do um, on their field. Um, so that's about all the time we've got for tonight. Before we wrap up, Tyler, you want to go ahead and roll for the giveaway? Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Once again, BOTW was the keyword for the giveaway this evening for this awesome, fun branded mug. Just a, a friendly reminder, it's the middle of competition season. So uh, I know a couple people were asking, like, hey, can I get these by championships? Don't plan on it. There's a lot going on, guys. And uh, to just be straight with you, like, I mean, you don't need a mug for your robot. But I have had people say, hey, uh, you know, I like the uses for championships. If that's your plan, you need another plan. Just telling you straight up, right? Uh, I mean, if you want to use a mug for championships, that's a good plan. But otherwise, uh, keep in mind, just shipping takes a little bit, guys. And we appreciate your patience on that. You can always follow up with me. But usually my answer will be is I'll follow up with the supplier and I'll let you know. And then as soon as I hear from them, we'll do that. But uh, once again, tinyurl.com forward slash redfishrobotics. And the winner it's going to be Mick Lass. Congratulations. Hey. hey way to go. Uh, Mick's Congrats, been, Mick. Uh, subscribed to us and supporting fun for a long time. So that means we clearly rigged it for him. So congratulations and lots of rigged emotes in chat. Uh, but Mick, reach out to me so we get that out to you. Thanks, buddy. And uh, thanks for supporting fun. All right, guys. That is all we have time for tonight. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us this season. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask you to let others know about the show. If you got a few bucks to support the stream, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand our stoked to have you here. Though our recaps may be, may have come to their conclusion, we'll still be sticking around for a while. If you're at the Houston Champs next week, feel free to come up to us and say hello. All three of us, Bryce, Aiden, and myself, will be there. Uh, we love talking to you guys, getting your feedback, um, and just you know chit chatting about FRC stuff. On behalf of myself, Bryce, and Aiden, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank all of our moderators in the chat. We will see you next season on Best of the West. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.